I think this is an important question. We have to keep in mind that the tripartite FDA focuses not only on trade integration or market integration, but also has two other pillars, the industrialization pillar and an infrastructure pillar. And these two pillars are particularly important to address what we might call the supply side issues, developing productive capacity, but also addressing some of the important issues that contribute to the high cost of doing business and therefore erode competitiveness of businesses in the region. So if we look at the infrastructure pillar, high costs of transport, telecommunications, financial and other services are really not supporting the development of manufacturing competitiveness. So building roads, railways and so on is very, very important. But associated with that has to be the development of appropriate regulation which facilitates efficient access to that infra infrastructure which we are building. On the industrialization pillar, it is well acknowledged that the capacity to produce tradables and non-tradables competitively is a major problem. Many of the countries in the tripartite region have very narrow industrial bases. Their industries and their firms are not very competitive. So taking a look at how we can support a broader base of industrial development, but also build on linkages between the services sectors and the manufacturing sector, because after all, um, efficient and cheap, good quality services inputs are going to promote competitiveness in the manufacturing sector. So making linkages between services and manufacturing, but also between services and agricultural development, because after all, getting agricultural products to the market requires good transport services, good information about market opportunities, and opportunities for adding value in terms of agro-processing. So we have to take a look at all of these issues to build an effective and integrated economic space which can support competitiveness development. And it's only competitive firms that will actually help us to address some of the development challenges because competitive firms will create more jobs. And unemployment, job creation effectively is one of the key challenges we face in all of the countries. South Africa is a bit of an outlier when we take a look at the BRICS configuration. It's smaller, its growth rates are not quite on a par with the other BRIC nations. However, politically it wants to be part of this group of emerging dynamic economies. And there may well be opportunities to promote the development not only in South Africa but in the region through the promotion of investment and so on. But we have to keep in mind that at the end of the day, the relationship among the BRICS is not consolidated by a rules-based governance system. These countries are not entering into a free trade agreement or any other rules-based uh, governance regime of, of any sort. So it's a loose political confederation at this stage, but it is an opportunity to raise a platform of ideas and discussion about economic development and to promote economic opportunities, investment opportunities and trade opportunities, not only in South Africa, but also in other parts of the African continent. We keep in mind also that the BRIC countries, China, Brazil, India in particular, have significant interests already in many other African countries. And therefore it's an opportunity also to use this forum to discuss economic governance issues at a very high political level. These countries can also start to play an important role in, for example, the World Trade Organization and other important economic fora and governance fora globally.